thank you for taking time for hemp. I'm your host, Casper Leach. You are listening to the live broadcast of Time for Hemp all around the world on AmericanFreedomRadio.com, AM, FM stations all across America and on the Roo Network. And I want to thank you for tuning in. I also want to give a big thank you to KDK Distributors for being nice enough to give us a grant to keep us loud, proud, and strong. And I also want to say thank you to Headshot Canada for also giving us a grant. They're an amazing group of people who work very diligently to make certain that their medical marijuana patients are patients and not criminals. On the program today, we oftentimes on Tuesday salute the amazing people up in Canada, all of our hardworking activist brothers and sisters who are doing what they can to end prohibition in their neck of the woods. And we normally have KDK distributor Kelly Kristen on as joint host. He is off to the Treating Yourself Expo this week, and it's an amazing expo. If you get a chance to pop in and see what's going on at the scheduled events there in Toronto, it would behoove you to make that happen. Uh, It is a world-class festival, and uh, Marco Rando does an amazing job at bringing together a wonderful group of people. Filling in today as the joint host is somebody who is a member of our family here on the big broadcast. And don't forget, anytime you hear the word joint on this broadcast, nearly 2 million people all around the world hit their pipes, their vaporizers, and their bongs and take time for hemp. On the program today, my joint host is Carrie Burns. Carrie, thank you for being on the big broadcast. We certainly appreciate it. Hi, Casper. Great to be with you, buddy. Great to be with you. How have you been? I've been high as hell and doing great. (laughs) What's new there at Cannabis Corner? Oh, we're just still keeping up the fight, trying to convince people that, uh, you know, that these laws are unfairly uh, put in place and that outright legalization is the only thing we're going to accept. Well, we certainly appreciate you working diligently to make that happen. And uh, we also have on the program today somebody else who is just as determined to end these horrible prohibition laws, and that is Lee Reich. Did I get that right, Lee? Uh, It's Lee Reich. Um, Reich. Reich. It gets often confused with Reich, and some people think I'm a little bit of a dictator, but I try to, uh, you know, show leadership and demonstrate that, you know, uh, people need to stand up for the patients who can't stand up or who di- who too disabled to to make these choices that you know need to be made. Well, one thing's for certain: you've got a piece of literature that is going forward to uh, our lawmakers and people in a place to make a decision. And uh, it sounds to me like you are, are really kind of what, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, I know, livid. <laughs> Livid's a good word. Um, <laughs> well, determined. You know, on that. <laughs> More than determined. I think, you know, when a patient stands up and becomes a caregiver, becomes an activist, and then becomes a lobbyist, there's a certain transformation that occurs in the person, which is me, and I'm also the own subject of my own documentary film. But um, I don't know if you've had Jason D. Andrews on the show, but he's a state ID patient in California being charged with possession and transportation. And what's wrong with that is that he has the state ID card and he's one of 300 Californians with the state ID caregiver card and not just a patient card that is being charged with transportation. And uh, I consider it to be a fraud by the state. Okay. Um, It's a voluntary program and... uh, He's being charged with something that he should be protected under his state ID card. But if law enforcement doesn't recognize the state ID card, then uh, often patients get charged with crimes. And uh, I find them falling through the loops of the state ID card program. And surprisingly, the health department has no place for state ID patients to complain uh, when there is a problem with the state ID card program. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it have been great when California had the chance to make it completely legal 
that they would have done that and then all of this would be down the tubes. None of these people would be hassled. They could all get their cannabis just as they needed or wanted as the way it should be because it's personal choice. I'm not a medical patient myself, but I've smoked for 45 years and I don't think it's anybody's right to tell me what I can or can't put in my body. And I just think that uh, it's just sad that these pa people who really depend on cannabis for their medical treatments, uh, you know, are, are hassled like that in any way. It's unbelievable. Uh, a patient facing charges is really hard. And uh, this won't be our first time rallying in initiatives. Uh, I'm also working on the California uh, Cannabis Health Initiative, CCHI 2014. And uh, we didn't make it into the ballots in 2012, but Colorado and Washington did. And they did something about it. Yeah, and, but they... Uh, I'm totally disappointed with all of that. I, I I think that all they did up there was turn it over from one cartel to another. Uh, it just, you know, people that were paying already extreme prices for their cannabis, and now they got a 25% sales tax on top of that. It just seems like we just, uh, you know, it just we're going the wrong direction with it. And, I, and that was the problems I foresee from the beginning with medical marijuana. I thought that there was too much emphasis put on that and not enough on just outright legalization. It's been illegal for 75 years. We don't need to take more baby steps to say, oh, we'll eventually get there. We've been doing that for, you know, four and a half decades in my life and seven and a half decades in this country. And it's just, it's, it's time for it to end. It's time for, you know, it's never hurt anybody, never killed anyone. There's no, there's no substance out there that's legal that they can make that claim to. And it's, it's your word about it being fraudulent is right on the money. It is fraudulent. Uh well, imagine being a caregiver in a state where you're responsible for a patient's doctor's letter being valid, and you find out that you're, fake, you're getting fake letters from Skype doctors, and that's going to be another topic. I was going to read the report when you guys would like me maybe to just read the report itself and not my personal letter that goes out with the report to our assemblymen and our senators, because I participated at a lobby day with ASA up at the Capitol. And uh, we, we spent a whole day on uh, May 6th meeting our senators in all the different districts. And I visited three different districts. And uh, I was representing cases for Jason Andrews, uh, Memo, uh, who is also a state ID patient facing charges, and uh, trying to address our legislatures with some of our concerns. And uh, also while meeting with members of uh, UFCW union, and uh, normal, and all of us really up there, and me being a filmmaker with two nonprofit foundations trying to do the work of law enforcement and the medical board. <laughs> you certainly have your hands full. That is uh, absolutely. And yeah, if you want to go ahead and detail the report now, would be a good time to do so while we have a, a window of opportunity to make that happen. Okay, I'm just going to skip my personalized letter and I'm going to read. The Presenting the McLeap Medical Cannabis Law Enforcement Education Program. Uh, the annual case summary for 2013. The following is a case summary for preventable crime, whereas law enforcement, health department, or the medical board could have been more responsible in taking proactive measures to protect citizens who are also medical marijuana patients. Most cases go unreported due to fear of prosecution. Patients who report crimes are met with mixed results. Our case findings will show that patients' point of entry with doctors is in serious need of attention as well. A rising crime stemming from white-collar elements and cases where doctors' clinics operated by non-doctors offering Skype visits to their patients takes our immediate attention. The first fraud stems from exploiting first-time patients who don't know to see a doctor in person. First time patients must be seen in person by doctors. This can't be delegated to physician's assistants. That is clear. Operators hire regular secretaries, not physician assistants, to give out doctor's letters. Fraudulent operators also sell these clinics for profit. Other medical frauds include offering exemption letters, grower certificates, and licenses at a high cost. Confirmed cases over 130 in five counties affected, estimated 3,000 victims. Contra Costa, San Joaquin, Santa Clara, Alameda, San Francisco. 
We are asking to make sure clinics at least have on-site doctors to see patients or amend the law so we don't have to be concerned with Skype and telemedicine. Doctors who exploit telemedicine make it harder for doctors who are trying to be compliant. Patients can use Skype or telemedicine if they have been seen by a doctor the year prior by the same doctor. Most patients know the difference, don't know the difference, or a good faith examination. McLeap formed McDirk to address these victims of crime specifically. Our case references Antioch, Dublin, Brentwood, San Jose, Oakland, Walnut Creek, Can Care Wellness, Eye Care Wellness, Dr. Daniel Susat of Hawaii, Darlene Weaver, Discovery Bay, Dr. Jonathan Worlery, San Bernardino, Source, LegalInfoWebsite.com, California Medical Board, Victor Sandoval, Director of San Jose, Chris Baleen, Office of Telemedicine. Fiscal Impact, DFCA, Department of Consumer Affairs, Medical Board, has no means to refund victims or help them get new legal letters. Fiscal impacts will be determined by legal action at civil levels until state ex recognizes extensive harm caused by frauds. Case costs into millions, small claims, class action, and criminal investigation from medical board actions. We feel victims need a way to be compensated and supported from a state level because the cases generated inflict undue harm on patients who are already challenged, disabled, aged, or on limited income. It will cost us just an estimated $10,000 to get our current 70 victims to new doctor visits and get new letters and ID cards. Yes, the doctor's office in question charges $25 for an ID card, if you can afford it. The second fraud case stems from the state's own medical marijuana ID program, where patients who voluntarily join the medical marijuana ID program are charged with crimes that are supposed to be protected for those who possess this voluntary ID program managed under each county's health department. We have found patients prosecuted and caused irreparable harm by these cases and untrained law enforcement agencies in several counties and cities. Fiscal impacts for cases each patient bears a case defense cost of an estimated $20,000 to upwards of $100,000, depending on the case they face and the number of trials. The state, however, can spend upwards of $3 million per case investigating and charging the state ID patient. Patient also pays for both state ID cards. Patient and caregiver average $120 to $150 per card depending on the county and the program. Additional fiscal impacts results from return of property seized unlawfully and damages for additional harm. These case costs will rise in the millions, which is preventable to the state through McLeap courses for law agencies or simply by its own proper regulation and implementation of existing programs. Case reference, Jason D. Andrews, Joe Grumbine, and Guillermo Avila. Uh, note, chrisconrad.com, expert.witness, slash rulings, .html. Our case studies show a failure at all levels of law enforcement up to the courts, a pattern that pushes patients to take, quote, deals, and for brave patients, a legal system that denies fair trial and the affirmative defense of prevailing protections offered of the ID card itself. If law enforcement refuses to accept the ID card, the patient faces several years in the legal system. SB 420 was implemented to protect state ID card fraud victims. McLeap formed to educate law enforcement where the state has failed to educate its law enforcement. The third fraud is law enforcement's refusal to protect patients who report serious crimes and what is known as diversion where mono marijuana is taken and put back on the streets. Without proper reporting, other preventable crimes against patients that allow dangerous perpetrators to commit serious crimes against patients go unreported. Denied case reports force patients to use civil court if possible where criminal charges or allegations are refused to be reported by law enforcement agencies. Case reference, Vallejo, 
ECC East Bay Custom Collective, Vallejo Police Department, Los Angeles Police Department, Brentwood Police Department, Oakley Police Department, and Livermore Police Department. Better regulation is the best solution to these problems. The listed agencies of health department have no means for patients to complain at this time. Medical board accepts complaints, although action is not effective or fast acting to deter future frauds or help victims of the crimes being reported. We formed McDerp to address these victims' needs. Cal VCP, the Victims of Crime Program, has no means to assist these cases or claims either. While organizations like UFCW, Americans for Safe Access, and Normal serve patients' concern in broad areas, despite their focus, our patients are calling for mean meaningful reform and regulation. I encourage your response and hope to meet with you in the future. Thank you for your time and consideration. Lee Reich, McLeap. Well, with that said, we are down about one minute before commercial break. So when we come back, we'll be able to uh, kind of detail what all of that means. I do want to encourage people to go to iTunes. And when you are there, you can type in the search engine Time for Hemp and all of our podcasts pop up and are free to download. Big thank you to AmericanFreedomRadio.com for helping to raise the voice of the marijuana movement and for letting everybody know how important it is to take time for hemp. You know, gentlemen, we're all about the same age, so when I say this, I think you know who I'm talking about and understand when I say it was okay when Iggy Pop was 20 and he danced around the stage with his shirt off. But now that he's 185, it's disgusting. Yeah, we're here. Yeah. We're here. All right. I just didn't hear any comment back on that. So oh, I was, I was waiting for your commercial land. land. Oh. <laughs> so uh, um, what would you like to ask me about that report I just dropped on you guys? That was pretty epic, right? That was pretty epic. You know, we're going to want to know how that uh, plays out on the nation, and the impact that it has on the... Uh, uh, medical marijuana movement itself as a whole, you know. Well, question, who's going to well, listen to me? That's the first thing I'm going to ask you. Can we get people to listen to me? Here's my question. Okay, all this effort, all that you're doing, I, and I applaud you for what you're doing because those people are being wronged and everything else. But it just seems like to me that we, we uh, as a nation, we seem to have just been sucked into this medical marijuana thing, knowing from the beginning that the DEA wasn't going to let up. They weren't. The cops weren't going to let up. They're the people who they've set up this whole bogus thing and all that. Why aren't all the efforts just going to make this substance completely legal, just like you have anything else out there? And that way, none of this has to be happening. None of these people would be messed with. You wouldn't have to be spending $120, $150 per card. You wouldn't have to be dealing with law enforcement. You wouldn't have to be going to anyone to get your cannabis unless you yourself couldn't grow it. What? Why aren't all That's, the efforts going to that? Why I, are we, think, I think the effort on that is because... When you approach somebody and say that, you know, we're going to use marijuana for oil or for cloth or for paper or, they, or for food, they go, well, we have other substitutes for that. We don't need to use that plant. Yes, we can use that plant for that. But you see, people get high off of it, so we got to keep it illegal, and we can use substitutes for that. But when you say you need it for medicinal purposes, well, there is not another substitute for that. And well, it that, challenges them right there. And not only do we already have historic fact of the industrial, but they outlawed it themselves. Right. Who, who benefits? Well, the, the Law thing, enforcement. The thing is, Jail. though, it's an herb. It, and it, it's not the only medicinal herb on the planet. It's the only medicinal herb on the planet that's illegal. But it, it doesn't, that doesn't, just because they made it illegal due to stupidity seven and a half decades ago, doesn't mean that we have to keep playing their game. That's my, that's my whole fight from the beginning, 40, which I started 40-something years ago, was this is all bogus. The drug enforcement, all that's bogus. We need to go for legalization because it's a person's right to put this substance in their body. It's an herb. If they want to use this herb, it's their right. No law, nobody has domain over that. I don't care what the what they line up. And Washington, what's going on in Washington, Colorado, and all that now, it's just it's unbelievable. It's, it's, uh, I almost wish it stayed illegal. I really do. 
if that's what we had to settle for. Well, what better are we doing in our state? But you have to remember the courts, the law enforcement are all given federal funding or those people are all making money keeping these court cases going into the courts. Yeah, but if they're, you look at New York statistics, yeah, the, they're the legal at, pat downs. They're looking those, at you're you're looking at a few few pennies compared to hundreds of millions of dollars if you grew the hemp if you had the hemp growing the, you could give the marijuana away people wouldn't even have to buy it at all it is it simply is business why we cannot grow this wonderful plant it is originally uh the most uh, amazing plant for 50,000 different products in the industrial field and it also creates a great medication to be used for a variety of elements and it is outlawed. A lot of people jump up and down and say, well, we, we really had our belly full of chasing after the medical aspect of it. Why are we doing that? It's because the government decided to outlaw our use of this plant because of what they said happens to us when we ingest it, smoke it, and eat it, how horrible it is, and then they put it on the same schedule as medications that were outlawed. So we have to combat them on their own playing field by showing that medication is what this plant does provide as well as the 50,000 different products. Those who know the hemp history realize that the real reason this plant was outlawed was because the petrochemical companies were terrified of the amount of money our farmers were going to make, and they were not. And the um, industrial community decided to get together with uh, the pharmaceutical industries and the petrochemical industries, and uh, suddenly we had the oil industry jumping on board saying, well, we are going to call it marijuana with the help of Jay Randolph Hearst and outlaw it. And when we outlaw this plant, we don't have to worry about it being in direct competition with fossil fuel or the $30 a pill for your headache we plan on shoving on the public. Well said. And that is, yeah, that, well is put, the, Casper. that is the true reason why it is outlawed. It's not outlawed because, ooh, we get you high. It is not truly a bad medication, and our government can just Google medical marijuana and in three minutes find out from a variety of 100 new research uh, papers that have been released in the last three years by other countries how wonderful this plan is and they have their own medical marijuana program where they still give four patients medical marijuana so it's like me saying I'm not going to sell you a solar energy panel because the sun never comes out yeah, I know awesome. I'm lying you know I'm lying the truth is I want you to buy the oil from the oil industry to light your home please don't use the sun well I'm I'm all for people using cannabis for medicinal reasons, for social reasons or whatever. But I think the, what happened with the medical marijuana issue, though, is they, the normal pot smoker like myself who doesn't. I use cannabis as a, as a health, as a uh, sickness preventative. It's kind of like, uh, like a tonic you take each day, and if you take it, you don't get sick. And people that are just normal pot smokers that just enjoy relaxing and getting high, they've all been shafted by this, this, this what I like to call just a conglomeration of just spaghetti noodled, you know, laws and, and regulations. That's the problem we have. We're so over-regulated, and we, we totally get away from the whole thing that – Nobody has a right to tell us we can't use this plant. I don't care. <laughs> well, if they sick. don't, but they, yeah. they may not have that right, but they've done that right. They've yeah, actually they, 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 but, but that's my that's my point. If we keep going the routes like they want us to do, the you know, going these little routes of medical marijuana and then fighting the DEA because they're never going to leave those people alone that try to set up legitimate businesses and all that. Yeah, but what We're, are you suggesting? What are you suggesting? We just I, go out one morning and just start planting it and say, well, screw you, DEA. Go ahead and haul us in. We're just going to 
file a lawsuit against you based on constitutional rights. Yeah. I've got $135,000 to fight you. You yeah. got $15 million. Oh, and I've only got about 10 years to live, and you've got until the time Jesus comes back. <laughs> My God, I'm going to stand here and fight you. Yeah, I agree so, with you on that one. But what are you going to do? I mean, seriously, if but, you're not going to play their game, what game are you going to play? Well, I, the only uh, game, the only game I'm going to entertain is outright legalization, and I will fight them till the bitter, till my final days are here. Which I, it, you know, it, we may still be fighting it so, by the what time. What does that mean to you? What what what, what, what well, does complete legalization mean to you? That means that you can grow your own without having to have a permit to grow. You're not told how many plants you can grow. If, if you want to grow a hundred for yourself, great. You're also you're not hassled by any kind of law enforcement if you're caught with it in your possession or at your house. You're not if you are caught with it or anything. They have they have a right to seize all of your assets because you happen to be possessing an herb that, and put it in the. If we did this, then we could could get the hemp industry going and 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 the economy itself would benefit from the pot business itself in america is not that much money it's it's a very small amount and it's only it's only at that amount that it's at right now because it's illegal but but but, but, okay now you now you just said hemp industry it makes it sound to me like you're saying that all the other industries need to be taxed and regulated except marijuana i mean i'm going to tell you straight up oh i'm going to be buying wait if i'm going to be buying tomatoes for my uh, a little uh, store down the street. I want to make sure that they don't have pesticides because it's going to kill me. Sure. And if they're going to be using ketchup, I want to make sure that there's somebody from the government inspecting that, that ketchup facility to make sure that it's being sure. cooked properly well, not, and, a, and a healthy facility. Well, in, anybody that's going to grow that's that's going to sell to the public, they certainly need to follow under Department of Agriculture rules like they do any other product. But I'm talking right. about the you know the, the law enforcement of arresting and incarcerating people. That's what I'm talking about. That's, that should never California. happen. California is completely unregulated the way yeah. it is. There, what, what was supposed to be implemented for regulation hasn't been regulated, what? and that was why I completed this point. report. That's but, my point. It's all. It but, doesn't matter what you do. They're not going to regulate it. You know, they're going to screw it up anyway. That's why if cons- you had it outright legal, you wouldn't have this battle. Right. But consider that we tried to make steps for medical marijuana. Our state has vetoed industrial hemp with both governors, and the and it was all because of fear of the DEA, and that's a terrible yeah, reason yeah, but to give they- up industrial hemp because California is now behind Colorado and Washington, mm-hmm. and I'm going to do one interview with our first hemp farmer in Colorado. So well, we one- do have our first hemp farmer in Colorado, and we'd like to at least say hemp for victory to that, guys. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm proud of that, but what my point is this, that if, you, if, the, if the people in California had stressed the hemp industry when that thing came up for vote, they never mentioned one thing about the hemp industry. All they were trying, they, they just said, hey, let's just make pot legal, and that was pretty much what they did. If they had gone in and stressed the importance of the hemp industry and what a vital part in our history that it was, that thing would have passed. But they didn't uh, put the efforts in it. who grow marijuana for the medical industry fear cross-pollination. And I know that's a stupid Well, that, every reason. grower fears that. But anyone who's in the medical scene has really staunchly been against uh, industrial hemp in the state. And obviously, because I'm doing a film called Hemp for Victory, I'm very into having making sure that you could grow both on the same acre. And I well, know it can be done. Can. That's ignorance and, and to think that And people are just it... not thinking properly to create the right conditions for industrial hemp and medical marijuana in the same states. The, we grew hemp in this country for a century and a half. We don't. We already know how to do it. That's the thing. We, we threw away an industry we already had down to a fine art. No, no, no. We, made the we, didn't, do, we didn't do that. A handful of greedy business people yeah. who, who were slick with, con, with congressmen DuPont, made that happen. Others. It was robbed from us. Right. I agree. With Harry you, Anslinger. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, we already know that there's also so many other things wrong with our government, none of which any of us can fix. And we are either forced to play their game or just stand along the sidelines and just complain. Yeah, uh, well, I, we're, we're making a strong attempt. This report I'm releasing, I hope in the hands of gentlemen like yourselves, will help get attention on these specific issues we're addressing. Because well, a statewide fraud is, is serious news. And... I think that it's important to address it as strictly fraud if we can't implement a safe medical marijuana program. In fact, Colorado had um, its own problem with their medical marijuana program and excessive spending at the actual program. All of these 
all of these issues that you're dealing with right now, they were dealing with when Nixon passed the Controlled Substance Act. Even though it was illegal, all of the issues, the same thing, even though it wasn't called medical marijuana and all that, the same situation occurred four and a half decades ago. We've come nowhere. We've come nowhere. We have just keep succumbing to the powers that be because they say that we can't do nothing about it. And I don't agree with that. I absolutely, if people really got on board and we could make this legal, we don't have to have a medical marijuana card. People don't go to the liquor store and show a, a medical marijuana. But, mar- but, but, show but a medical you just card. said it right there yourself. We've had it for four decades. And then you went, if people come on board. What's a driver's yeah. license? What? You show your driver's license to get liquor. Yeah, but that's not a hundred twenty dollar cost. Go there, a medical marijuana patient, and law enforcement looks at your driver's license, but mar- law enforcement doesn't look at your state ID card in Orange County. We have we've created the McLeap program to teach them how to look at a at a state ID card. I can understand that, and I understand that that's that's what's forced you into that. But it, like my point, I made from the beginning about medical marijuana, it is going to do nothing but cause problems, and that's what it's done. It's caused problems on on every angle that you can look at it. It hasn't accomplished anything. In fact, to me, it's taken the medical the med- the marijuana movement backwards, not forward. Uh, California has definitely taken steps backwards in a 16 years that I, I mean, I've only observed a a good five to six years of this 16 years, but I've watched it go steadily downhill because I started in Los Angeles. I went up to the Bay area and I've been observing the whole state the whole time. And I'm actually amazed at the amount of fraud and difficulty that no one's recognizing that we're dealing with medical marijuana patients, sick people who need help. How far do you think prohibition would have ended? How quick do you think prohibition would have ended instead of them coming out and saying, hey, we're going to make beer legal again? Oh, let's tell you what. Let's use beer for medicinal purposes. And if you have this card here, you can go and buy your beer without getting arrested. How far do you think that would have flown in this country? It well, wouldn't Well, let's have. be honest. I want you to take a moment to consider what Ross Perone said, that all use is medical. And that may be therapeutically relaxing and taking some time off of your work and enjoying your pipe or enjoying your brownie. But that rest and relaxation is therapeutic healing time for your body. So is and drinking think, a beer. Well, well, hey. well I'm, I'm going with an argument that's popular by people like, you know, Ross Perone and people who are in the he's industry. Part of the, he's it, part of the system that made it illegal. Uh, all right. So, I mean... You know, I'll use Carrie, medical. Carrie, Carrie, what is your big suggestion that we? How, how do we just overturn this? Do we get well, an executive order? Do we just march through there, Congress? No, the, 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 the order was the best the, one I've no, heard. Uh, the first scheduling. Those no, the are all first, important things. The pathway to legalization first begins when yes. we excise ourselves from the Singles Narcotics Treaty of 1961. That's and who's what. We? Who's the, we? Uni- the United States government. Now, the, there's three ways that can wait, happen. Wait, 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 wait. Now, how there's do three- we do that as a body of people? Uh, as so a body of Congress people, to do we, that? Pe- we petition the Human Health Service Director. She uh-huh. has the- we got to get a bunch of people to make that happen, and it's yep. not going to happen here. At how come? Carrie, where are you coming from? I'm just speaking the truth, brother. I know, but seriously... We, we've tried to get industrial hemp legal for how many? See, it's already been legal in two states, and we're waiting for the DEA to sign off on that, and it hasn't. But we've got yeah. medical marijuana in like 20, 20 states yeah. and recreational in two states. Seems to me like the industrial approach is like a nowhere go way. No, it's, it's I'm okay. Not, we got I'm not talking about the in industrial Kentucky. approach. I'm and, not talking uh, people about We're going to be gathering in Kentucky for canna stock, and we're going to be talking about a non medical state with an all. All activist event for uh, for for smoking, medicinal use, and obviously industrial hemp because Kentucky wants its hemp. And someone called me this morning and said, "Say hey, Canis Stock, Kentucky Hemp for Victory is going to be there. Casper, you're invited. I mean, you you're also invited. You know, no. so we want to see you guys in Kentucky for this mm-hmm. huge hemp event, and we need sponsors. My July my... 28, 26, only... 28. 
the only reason I would approach from an industrial standpoint is because of what it would do for our economy. The you, the people's ignorance out there about uh, you know the the for the first time in the United States history, over fifty five percent of the people out there favor legalization of marijuana. They don't think that we ought to have laws against it. So this is our time to take advantage of that and get these people that are on board to go ahead and vote for it. And Marijuana make it legal. always takes the attention off of industrial hemp. It's been that way since it's been used as a fear-mongering campaign. Well, they Marijuana- don't call it cannabis. In fact, I've looked at redacted documents where the use of the word cannabis is deleted, and they put the word marijuana back well, in. The, the, the U- United Nations Office of Drug Control Policy, which controls drug policy for the world, they just passed in 2010 that this, su- this plant will be referred to as either cannabis or cannabis resin for the hashish. No dope, no pot, no marijuana, nothing like that. They, this, is in, this is in the treaty that we are signed onto, the Singles Narcotics Treaty. They said it is to be referred to as cannabis because that's what it is. It's a plant in the genus cannabis. That's the, that's what it should be referred to. It's law enforcement that hasn't jumped on board and followed that criteria. They make us follow all the damn laws about it. Follow but, the money. Well, the money, I understand all of that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, you know, there's no argument there. I understand all the why, why things are happening. I'm just saying when, when a legislative body that controls everything passes something and they say this is be, to be referred to as cannabis and then you've got a law enforcement agency that makes a buzz, he said, oh, yeah, we got some pot off them, the deadly narcotics. You know, it's bullshit. I'm built, it's bogus. And it just, I, I just really believe that people out there are, are being given the wrong message. They think that medical well, yeah, marijuana sick people into becoming crime victims no no i don't i don't think that they should be criminals i i smoke pot i don't consider myself a criminal at all i never have i'm watching people who are who are supposed to be patients and sick people trying to do the right thing getting arrested and they're sick already and it's harder for sick people to fight trials sure and that's why they take deals and they take these these terrible sentences or they take these charges with you know that that are hard to get off their records. One of the reasons why I and, said and, and, medical and, marijuana. And Carrie, Carrie, the other aspect is is that Lee came on board to talk today about this fraud that's going on around the state, yeah, yeah. and you want to talk about redoing the entire movement and going well. Let's not go after legalization for medical medical marijuana. Let's just legalize the whole motherfucker and not pay taxes on anything and just say the hell with oh, no, them. We're gonna, oh no, uh, I, I say put but it you up get for. What I'm getting at. You're trying to yeah. check. It's like it's a whole different conversation. Well, I'm not trying to make a different conversation. What I, the point I was trying to make was that, that if we had, instead of going after medical marijuana from the beginning, if we had focused on making it legal, you would not have any of these issues with medical marijuana at all. And it would be, a, I'm, not, I'm saying if people want to grow and sell it in a store, they should in charge Central, a sales tax. Yeah, I do. I wake, I bake, I do whatever it takes to get me through the day. First thing I do when I roll out of the rack is get myself a great big cup of joe. And then Joe gets dressed and go to work, and then I get out of bed and get a cup of coffee, and then I pack myself a bowl. The next thing you know, I'm busy in front of the computer trying to help end prohibition. Lively discussion today as to what is going on in the marijuana movement. I want to remind people that if Congress were to try to outlaw marijuana today, they would have been laughed at very seriously. But it was outlawed at a time when the only thing we really had going for communication was newspapers. We didn't have internet. We, we really didn't really have much access to telephones. And uh, communicating between people was done by snail mail. And that usually took anywhere from three weeks to two and a half months to get a letter across the country. So when our government was telling its population that it needed to do this or they had to do that, our population here in America was the type of people that actually believed the government. There was really a time when if the government said, go out in the middle of your acre and kiss the dirt and plant a rock, people would have done that because the government said, we got to do it. And that's what led us into World War I, World War II. And during this time, we had people in, in the legislative body who decided to come up and change the name of the plant publicly and convince our farmers that this one plant known as marijuana was destroying our, our country, our, taking our society down the tubes, causing black men to step on the shadows of white women and, 
and causing women to want to have sex with black men and our youth to go crazy with that rock and roll. And the next thing you know, we're going to have everybody going to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> and we've just got to Very outlaw this plant. And everybody went, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, I agree. The government says it's bad, it's bad, let's make it outlaw. And so they voted to outlaw it. And then they went out the next year to put in their crop of hemp. And the federal boy showed up and said, what are you doing? And the farmer said, well, we're planting our, our hemp. we got to have rope. we got to have oil. we got to have food. we got to have cloth. The, and the feds said, well, you got petrol oil for that now, and you got nylon fibers for that because this is illegal. And they went, no, it's not illegal. And they went, yeah, you outlawed it last year. They said, no, we outlawed marijuana. And the boy said, well, yeah, that's what this is. And the farmer said, no, this is hemp. And the federal boy said, yeah. Marijuana, hemp, the same thing. And the farmer looked at the federal boys and went, you're stupid. And the federal boys no, went, no, you're stupid. You just outlawed your cash crop because you believed our lies. Mm -hmm. So true. It, that, that's my movie in short. You just nailed it, Casper. That's like the short version of my movie. I wish I could have done it so nicely. Thank you. Now, <laughs> if you would have marched out today and said we're going to outlaw marijuana, people would have said, are you nuts? We yeah. use it for med medical purposes. We use it to uh, uh, fuel the, the tanks in our cars, and we keep our homes warm with that. Hell, Johnny's just wearing clothes that last two school years with that, and the tennis shoes that we're making out of that. My kids last two school years with that. We're not going to outlaw that plant. Are you nuts? And if the and if the oil company said we got to, and the pharmaceutical company said we got, and the government said we got, the public will still say, you're absolutely wacky. You might want to outlaw it in your little world, but you're not going to outlaw it in the world. So go away. But this happened at a time when the public could be duped. Well, and also, too, you We're still being it. duped every day in the state yeah. of California. Patients are going to doctors and don't know what to expect or not even going to doctors. Yeah, that, you, know, you know, you look at that go from to Skype doctors to not even having to see a doctor at all to get their letters. You What's at, wrong with that? You look at the mindset of people back in the 30s and the ignorance. I mean, people were ignorant. There's no doubt. They were they were absolutely ignorant. And like Casper said, they, you know, the government said jump and they said hell high. And it just, that's that's what an issue that probably bothers me more than anything about the whole thing is that we are still you know, in, uh, enforcing these laws that was made during a period of really st stupidity in this country. And, the, and, and basically what happened, all the federal boys that were chasing after booze didn't have a job. So they said, hey, if we do this, we can just put all those guys to work doing this. And that's what they did. Well, they sure I, did. I, all right. Now, we've only got about five more minutes. Now, Lee, you came on for a specific purpose. Let's give you a chance to get that purpose. Okay, for I'm part of some other groups, and I just want to say thank you to the Human Solution and uh, Amy Fisher and Joe Grumbine for, for, and Kathy Z and so many people for the Human Solution that just launched a chapter in Michigan. And I'd like anyone to be able to look at thehumansolution.org to, to help people who are victims of some of these senseless medical marijuana laws that aren't working. And obviously, um, you want to look at your own state, uh, you know, initiatives. And uh, please log on to CCHHI 2014 for the California Hemp Initiative this year, which, we, is, part of which is part of the Jack Herer Foundation. And uh, my movie uh, is a tribute to Jack Herer and sustaining the film Hemp for Victory. And I purchased recently hempforvictory.net. And you can expect, you know, a Time for Hemp link right on hempforvictory.net. And I thank you guys for, you know, having me on the show. To um, we still, also, you know, we still got a couple, but you, you don't need to rush off quite, quite so. We still got a couple <laughs> more minutes, you know. Well, I know. I just want to make sure because so many people have asked me to press some very important things at the end here. And Canna Stock in Kentucky is really a great platform where we should all consider getting together in a non-medical state to say something big for industrial hemp. And uh, that's the most important thing I can say right now, because something in Kentucky and bringing back Kentucky bluegrass would be a great way for me to end Hemp for Victory 2012 in 2013, knowing that it's really Hemp for Victory Chronicles, three different movies dealing with so many facets of this, what, what should be an industry that's not allowed to be an industry, and trying to help people who are caught up in this unfortunate situation, and trying to use education to educate law enforcement, our leaders, and even our government at the highest level. So please, Mr. President, do something about this. Ha. Huh. 
Amen. Right, right, Kerry? Amen. Huh. Obama won't. Huh. He's probably, he, he doesn't have any problem because when he gets up to the second floor of the White House, he pulls his bong out. Nobody bothers him. Uh, <laughs> I, who, I what, what the Chum Gang? Huh? Yeah, yeah, the Chum Gang. No kidding. I have a friend by the name of Jay Nair who says he just needs to walk down to the Oval Office someday and make an executive order like he's done everything else to end the war on drugs and be done with it. Yeah. And uh, if he did that, you know, there'd be statues all around the world praising ask, him as being. No ask he, your listeners to ask every one of your listeners right now to ask Obama to make that executive order. Let's <laughs> ask our listeners to contact their congressmen, contact their senators, contact everybody they can to make a difference in their community, in their city, their county, their state, and this whole nation. Yeah. yeah he's, but, how many executive orders has he? I think he's made an executive order while he's been in the bathroom taking a dump. Yeah, exactly, Casper. You got that right. <laughs> well, if people want to sit down and, and, and not take action, that's why things don't change. When well, people see, that, get off their ass... And they take action, things change, and that's what my my efforts are really trying to do is is wake people up and educate and advocate for the people that can't do this, the and, people that are too sick and unwell to even make a difference. But we're trying every day. In the well, early it would be funny if he got bombarded at the White House asking for an executive order to end the war on drugs. Go ahead, Gary. In the early seventies, uh, when I was uh, a young young man. Uh, there were there was a big strong movement for the cannabis movement all back then, and people the general public didn't really care if people smoked pot. They we walked down the street smoking a joint. Nobody even cared nothing about it. But it was when when Reagan and Bush took over, all of a sudden cannabis became this dangerous thing, and the and the the entire population just sucked into it. Just you know, just unbelievable. But back in the in the days when I was in high school, and all pe- people smoked cannabis walking right up to the school. They I know, but wait, 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 wait. Take a look at it. George H. Bush, who had this big oil company, is the one who let the medical marijuana federal program fade out. Yeah. And his buddy Clinton did not reinstate it. And then George Jr., who has an oil company, yeah. made sure it got buried. It was the oil companies that have buried marijuana. Right. The the <laughs> A lot of people don't realize it, but during Clinton's reign of terror, more people were arrested for cannabis possession than any other time in our history. Uh, not Cl- since Obama. I was going to say, not since Obama. Well, he's not <laughs> finished yet. Let's let him get his numbers. Of course, he will supersede all of them. But, but Clinton, so everybody was like, oh, when Clinton was there, we had a chance. I said, no, you're wrong. They had that uh, McCaffrey or whatever was his drugs are, you know, this ex-military guy. I mean, he he's even still today is one of those just, yeah, marijuana's dangerous and we need to snuff these people out. You know, it just... Well, it's we a- got about one minute each to give a shout out to shows, programs, and URLs. Uh, quickly. Uh, please join us at uh, hempforvictory.net uh, and humansolution.org the Jack Herr Foundation and, uh, you know, I want to and, uh, you know, see us at Canistock. Uh, we're going to be at uh, the uh, – we, we want, you know, to make sure that everyone out there can, you know, make a difference. And we need more sponsors and support for our McLeap.org and our, our programs to help educate law enforcement. We need some support from people to stand up, help write letters, and join us in actually reaching out to our elected right. officials. All right. Thank you so much. We'll have you back in the future as a guest. And Carrie. Thank you, Lee, and uh, I support anybody that's part of the marijuana movement, the cannabis movement out there. Go to CannabisCorner.com. Our show's based on outright legalization, and that's our goal. Thank you, Casper. Tomorrow is Leap Day here on Law Enforcement. We'll have Peter Chris on Time for Hemp.